And then the whole bait to have people help us was to get them interacting with the stream so that they're active, they're watching, and they're engaged. So I ended up working out. But yeah, sorry for the wait, guys. Um, thanks for, for chilling out. And thank you, Follis, for, for dealing with our unprofessional streaming abilities. Mm -hmm. no it's all good i'm happy to be here and uh, yeah if you've ever tuned into any of my streams you know that um technical difficulties are not something i'm uh i'm far into <laughs> <laughs> all right cool well since everyone's waiting so long we can probably just like fucking hop into the charts right yeah uh do we want to check uh check our weekly oil chart yeah so full is, I, I don't know if you've ever watched any of these Sunday market reviews, but generally we go through um, just like the primary stuff like Dixie, uh, the indices, VIX, some commodities, and then the majors, and we'll take questions at the end. Nice, man. That sounds good. So you want to start with Dixie, Miz? We can do, yeah, we'll just go down the list. Fuck it. All right. Yeah, so... My initial thoughts here were we were going to push up to 113, but um, I I think uh, I might might actually have been wrong. I mean, I've been predicting that for like a couple of months now, and what that level comes from like it's like a monthly level if you end up looking to the left pretty far. Um, but I almost feel like we're having some exhaustion to the upside here. Um, I mean, weekly still looks pretty good. However, I think the three previous weekly candles you're losing uh losing some steam so we have like a huge drive out of the bull flag then you have a, another candle it's like pretty juicy some fat wicks though and now you have this candle that if i just feel like we're, we're losing some upside momentum so maybe like uh there's also bearish divs pushing into the uh, higher time frames if you're an rsi bear div uh, trader or bull div trader so i would look for um some type of dis distributive top to form. And I think if we end up losing the Monday low and there's not a quick buyback, I think we probably puke it down to about 105. There should be a uh, fair value gap around there if my yeah. memory serves correct. Right. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you probably fill in one of these FEGs down around 105, 106. And I think it would be a, a nasty puke. And then all. You know, alternatively, or I guess uh, subsequently, you would see a Bitcoin likely pop. So that's kind of like my thoughts on Dixie. Any thoughts on Dixie, uh, Fullis? Not much to add. I, the, uh, the most I paid attention to Dixie in the last uh, week or so was when it was kind of pulling down from those equal highs that it hadn't run yet um i was th pretty bullish on it even while it was pulling back just because I, I expected those to get run um but yeah not a chart that i've actually looked at in the last couple of days yeah i mean that that huge ass h4 candle there off of the the pwl was super fucking bullish but now it's just kind of like in my opinion looking like a bit of distribution starting to happening up here I think someone's like uh you know feeling it out and there's a decent chance that it pulls back but i think if i were to take a trade i think psychological level 110 maybe set your stops at 110.2 you could probably get short here and aim for like 105.5 i think it's a really good rr but um yeah it's kind of maybe you'd want to see a reaction off the monday low as well if you don't see any huge buybacks from the monday low um I think it's a much higher chance that, that we push down to that 105.5 level with the FEG and call it that FEG. Yeah, down here. So, yeah, yeah, so that's kind of my thoughts. And then, you know, we can take it. That's, that's a pretty far way down, right? So we'll take it once it gets there. That might take a little bit of time. Yeah. Let me just, out of curiosity, I don't think I have it. Um... And look, well, this thing could still, like, fucking blow off the top and, like, rip, you know, couple of percent I me wrong but yeah to fill that feg we're at like what is that a little over three percent pretty significant yep. for yeah for this. yeah so that's what i'm saying like lose monday low and then that 
that buyback uh, that we had from 107, it starts getting contested. And I think that's whenever you might see some problems and people are trapped into the highs and you probably see that puke down. And then I, I think also the Euro is right around like one to one. I think it's under like, it's actually under one right now where it was. So I think whenever that starts happening, there's kind of um, just from like a risk versus world war perspective, there's usually some type of bounce back that occurs. So, yep, just, just my thought. I think that's kind of covers it for Dixie for me. Cool. Just looking at it there, if we, um, like on the M15, if we break down below 109, that'd be a pretty clean, uh, like QM setup, right? Like, cause we took, we took liquidity after a big pump up, um, looks to be breaking structure to the downside. There's a big imbalance left behind after that impulsive move yeah. up left displacement, you know, we in that case, we... gap into the left, right? Mm hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I'll be targeting a uh, previous daily low. So you're saying you would uh you would take like if if we start breaking down from the Monday high, you could you think a clean short to like one oh eight six. Yeah, pretty much exactly. Yeah. I think that's a clean level to level setup if you're looking for like a more short term intraday or intraweek trade. I just flicked a very rough chart into the um into the Discord chart. Just so you kind of have a half idea of what I'm rambling about. Yeah, I'll pull it up one second. All right, there it is. Oh yeah, pretty it's much something like that. Yeah, so um, below that mon Monday high, you think it's just going to puke down? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, to be honest, yeah. Like it, if you see, if we pull down below that Monday Monday high and start closing M30 candles, M15 and H1 candles below it. Um, then yeah, I would say retests are for shorting, um, and you would be absolutely looking to fill that FVG, targeting the lows. Um, yeah, that's kind of how I would play it uh, over the next day or so. And it's been playing so tight with, you know, Bitcoin trading. You know, the opposite. So like, I personally have been having um, my trading view up with like three panels, and Bitcoin has been so heavily correlated with. Uh, Dixie as well as um, ES that I've been having like all three panels up whenever I'm trading intraday and usually like Dixie and ES I keep on like the H4 just for a higher time frame perspective on where we're at with Bitcoin but it's trading so unbelievably close that Bitcoin's actually just lagging those two and I've been trading basically you know the opposite of how those are performing uh, to my Bitcoin trade so if ES is topping and Dixie is also topping and, you know, we're putting in like low time frame bar bearish market structure after a huge pump, like, and Bitcoin's coming into support. It's a really good opportunity to usually hop in uh, to, to like a long position. So, yeah, I think playing like the lower time frames and looking for for bearish retests on this top, like Paula said, is like a really good idea to get into a Bitcoin long. Do you look at um, SPX or... Nasdaq at all, or just ES and Dixie? Um, I mean, ES is just the the futures version of SPX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually trades just a bit cleaner than SPX, I think. So that's usually what I personally uh, I look at. Doesn't ES run on the uh, runs on the weekends because it's a? Uh... Yep, because it's futs and it's futures trading. Because it's the futures, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. I use a lot of the uh, the CFD charts because uh, you don't have to deal with as much of like market closing stuff. All right, so I think that looks oh, that covers it for Dixie. We can hop into uh, some more commodities, or yeah, we we can, let's check gold. I think gold had a huge puke. Yeah, it did. I think we had some levels um, around here, didn't we? Around like 1780. Yeah, so we shorted that. That wick at the very top there was our source that we literally uh, to the one. dot. No, uh, higher. Which? Uh, the very top wick. Oh, literally that top, one. Yeah. 
Yeah, remember we we drew our oh right our, our little box there, and it literally tagged it to the dot. Ah, oh, yeah. And then we yeah, were yeah. saying we wanted a low to form after it fills the gap. So there's that gap there. It filled the gap, bounced to the previous weekly high, and then looks like it is puked afterwards. So that was a beautiful bearish retest on the H4. Look at that. So it it retested that H4 order block and completely dumped. So this is also coming into coming into support. So thoughts on like the rest of the week for gold? Uh, zoom out to the the three day. So yeah, I mean we're at range lows again. Um, this is like an over one year range. I would assume probably up because it's kind of you know, like left curve brain says range bound. You sell the highs and buy the lows. So personally, I would assume that we might wick down and tag that level that we've been tagging for forever. But I mean, you're getting into the lower, you know, ten percentile of this range. Probably a low form here and back up. And it seems like a a lot of easy stops to run on the on the way up to. There's on the left hand side there. You know, eighteen thirty. You have a nice, very clean. The previous Monday high. It's gonna be easy stops to run. Eighteen eighty, clean stops. You're gonna have some troubles up at like nineteen hundred. But there's an FVG there as well. So maybe over the next couple of weeks, we aim to fill that FVG. Tons of liquidity sitting below like 1670. Like minimum yeah, I know. five lows. <laughs> That's what we were saying is like, if that breaks and it's not bought back up immediately, it's so fucked. <laughs> yeah. Like it looks so bad. It would be such a nasty distribution. Like if we. Because what I was thinking is we puke through to like 1560. Then we bearish retest at 1680. It would be so bad for gold. <laughs> so imagine we just cut right through to 1560. Yeah, I mean, that I could definitely see that happening. Yeah, and then you you underside retest this over one year distribution and it rejects. I mean, gold is destroyed. It's gonna be so bad. Yeah, I had something to uh, kind of yeah, keep I mean, an eye on. This area down here looks pretty ripe for the taking. Eventually, this feels so heavy. Was <laughs> zoomed out. Yeah. Whew. What's uh what Peter Schiff is probably not too happy about this chart right now. He's sweating bullets. I wonder what he's tweeting. All <laughs> the you risk are. of being a contrarian. Like if it does bounce, like let's say it sweeps those lows, there's a strong buyback. We bounce up to like seventeen fifty, seventeen eighty, something like that. And there's a valid bullish retest. Like the high never got swept, right? The high from twenty twenty never got swept. I'm pretty much an equal high there, so Yeah. I don't know. I could definitely see like there are definitely valid liquidity targets to the buy side. Um, I think, yeah, it's one of those things where you kind of want to wait. You kind of want to wait to see what price does once it sweeps and then determine your bias based on that information rather than rather than trying to guess here. It seems like a bit of guesswork involved here, but price will tell you a lot once once it sweeps, if it does sweep. So is this like a I'm kind of jumping the gun. We'll get more into it, but is this kind of like a similar thought process to Bitcoin currently for you? Pretty much. Like I, I guess so much of my system is determined by liquidity and structure that for me it, it makes such. It, it's very. It, it's actually a problem that I deal with. Like it's very hard for me to form a bias that's like contrary to a major liquidity draw. Like for instance, BTC at this level. Like even if I saw some low time frame bullish market structure form uh i would almost never take that long because for me the the high time frame draw on liquidity is always going to be to the downside especially when we've got you know <laughs> quad quad equal lows forming you know it just um it's it's like it's 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 impossible to me 
uh, as someone who, you know, I would say that my system is like 80% or 90% liquidity and structure, you know, so it's just, it's, it's difficult for me. And, and that, that is actually, that is obviously a, a positive sometimes, but it can be a negative because it's very hard for me to, to switch my bias. Like I, I made a, a meme post earlier on Twitter saying like, oh, Max Payne for me is like, if we actually pump from here, but it actually would be Max Payne because I, my bias would be like, it'd be extremely hard for me to, to start like longing things, even if we did pump from here, because to me, like the big draw is always going to be, is always going to be those lows. So yeah, for sure. It's, it's definitely, it's something that I, like, I'm quite aware that I'm overly biased towards, but at the same time, like that's my system and that's kind of what's working for me. So yeah, yeah. fully expecting that we scam pump from here, but at the same time, like, my system says to expect that sweep and to play for it. So until we get it, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm just kind of waiting for it, you know, that kind of way, which isn't, uh, isn't always the, uh, the best thing either. I mean, alternatively, I think like one, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And two, usually getting into a position you're not comfortable in, like more often than not, you end up losing money. You know, like even if you, I would rather miss a move than be in very, very uncomfortable in a, in a position, right? Because there's always going to be, you know, another, another play, but sometimes losing because, and then, you know, the hindsight, you kick yourself in the ass and then mentally you're not there for the next trade. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think as well, it, it's, it's easy to, um, like, it's easy to, to, to rag on your system, you know, when it's a liquidity based system, it's easy to, it's easy to, you know, to, to look at it underperforming on like a Saturday or like a Sunday and be like, damn, like this thing is broken, but like, there's no one trading today. So at the same time, I'm not going to be too um, militant about like how I assess, uh, how I assess things or like why things aren't working so well. But yeah, for sure. For sure, that sweep is something that I'm <laughs> that I'm waiting on. Maybe waiting in vain, but we'll see. Time will tell. All right, That's you want to look at the VIX next? Yeah, let's check it out. All right, so, so this is the, uh... coming into the mid of the pennant, right? That's what we said. Slight deviation to the lows. We expected some. Um, some slowing down in mid, and then we plan on it, uh, you know, taking off to, to the upper upper range. Um, just because, generally speaking, and historically, if you run the lows, we usually like push up at least into the mid, and it, you know, if if mid range doesn't uh, doesn't show any resistance, you usually just take it to the upper percentile of the range. So right now we're just sitting at mid range of the VIX. You know, right around the 27, 28 level. And I think there's an, uh, an opportunity for it to uh, to head in either direction. Like, obviously, it's very silly, like oh, up or down. But if you look at Bitcoin, it's also very much in the same position as well as, you know, ES. Um, so, you know, if ES sweep, I mean, if Bitcoin sweeps the lows, VIX is going to rip. If uh, Bitcoin, you know, continues to just to, to take stops higher. It's going to go ahead and bleed off back into the lower quartile of the range. So, yeah, I mean, there's not much to say here. You just, um, it's much easier when it's at one of the extremes because the chance it's going to push the extreme yeah. further is much lower. So, whenever you're sitting mid, it's kind kind of tough to do much with the VIX. So, kind of keep just keep it on your radar if uh, whenever it reaches one of the you know, either the nineteen twenty area or the thirty to thirty two area. But until then I think we're just there's not a whole lot to look at on the VIX. I mean we do have that gap below us. Yeah, yeah, the, and like historically those are always filled over time. So you know, so I'm surprised that Wick on Friday didn't fill it out. So yeah, that's something to keep an eye on. Like let's see if there's a reaction after that's filled. But um yeah I think just kind of keep an eye on VIX until it starts pushing one of the extremities. Mm -hmm. Good deal. All right, so mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look at oil and gas. Oh man, we we ended up bearish retesting. 
that H12 previous Monday high. Yeah, rejected. So, um, did it run that stop there um, on the lows? Or is that still holding? I think it's still holding the, those lows there to the left. So, I don't know. I think uh, you take the lows. No, it's back from September to the, the August lows. August lows? Okay. There's a triple tap there on the bottom. Yeah. Um. So I think maybe after it runs that triple tap low, um, probably want to see a reaction. If you and then it's going to be the same thing. You either underside retest, so it's bearish retest, and send down further, or it's going to be a you know liquidity grab deviation back into uh, back into the 90s. But I think you're definitely going to start seeing a uh, a resistance at the 90s if we don't reclaim that pretty soon. Do you chart much of uh, oil and gas or commodities, Folus? No, this is like uh, I'm like frantically pulling up charts that I've literally never searched for in my trading view. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not a rush. Uh, we usually just, <laughs> usually just, uh, just chart it because there's like some pretty big moves and it's like an overall decent uh, sentiment kind of. Yeah, I'm mode. looking at it now. The, on, I don't, I'm not sure is my trading view bugged out. There's like a wick to minus numbers on mine from like back in April. I'm not sure. Was there like a there massive is. drop? back then yep oh yeah, yeah when it was actually, actually trading at a negative <laughs> <laughs> they were paying you to take the barrels of oil off the literally yeah yeah actually true yeah so you were saying uh you were saying that they were like people were buying tankers or some shit yeah so apparently hedge funds uh were buying like scrapyard oil tankers from like the 70s that were going to be just chopped for you know scrap metal because they could buy, you know, oil uh, for so cheap, and just the the return was worth it to uh, basically store oil and wait for it to to bounce, <laughs> because the just the price of storing or the cost of storing oil and gas was so high that no one wanted to do it because it was just, you know, that's part of the reason why it went negative. So it's actually just a hysterical story, but yeah, I don't know. That's kind of all there is. Like, right, the overall, like, there's a theme here. The market is at really kind of like a pivotal level. Like, everything's sitting like right in the middle of are we going to grab liquidity and go higher, or are we like heading down into, you know, our lower ranges and we just distributed? We've seen it on uh, Dixie, we've seen it on VIX, we've seen it on now oil we've seen it on gold so like everything that we're seeing it's kind of just like riding the fine line of uh you know up or down so there's i think we're gonna probably have a volatile week isn't there some events this week or is it next week i think it's next week the 16th yeah um, so yeah i don't know i think overall yeah it might be a pretty volatile week we can take a look at natural gas which is uh this thing is just fucking pumping. I mean, I think we're actually going to have a pullback here. This kind of looks like a rounded top, right? Yeah, very much. A little head probably head back down, fill out that uh, F, that first FEG, and you'll probably get a bounce. Might underside retest for a bearish retest. But yeah, I think this thing, overall, this chart looks really fucking good. You're making bullish market structure. Um, you could argue that we just double topped, but. I still think it looks pretty good. We just yeah. wouldn't want to see a low form below the previous monthly low. I think the uh, the Europeans in chat are really feeling the effects of this chart right now. <laughs> Live. That's literally me right now. Have you noticed that, like in your your bills, like has it picked up? Um, like not for me specifically. Um, but yeah, I, like I've seen like horror stories of people getting like. Like literally like 10x uh, electricity bills. Um, so yeah, definitely, it's definitely like it's definitely part of the public discussion at the moment. We we still haven't switched the rads on from summertime. We're still um, we're still in that phase where we're just putting on extra layers, you know, <laughs> yeah. like clinging to the last dregs of summer. 
I, I haven't really yeah. read too deeply or too much into it, but as far as I understand, like the Nord Stream pipeline is now just like completely closed. Is that you probably know more about it than I do? Oh, I mean, not to be I, like, I literally read like the Reuters article and that was it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so it's yeah, it's going to drive up the the it's going to drive up electricity prices, drive up um, uh, gas prices. Um, because yeah, that was like one of our main, uh, one of our main sources of, of those commodities. So yeah, I think what, uh, am I right in saying that that was also the cause of like the current, like the, the last recent, uh, volatile down move from BTC, like, was it maybe Friday afternoon? Uh, oh yeah. Like some, uh, some Russian like gas shit. Cause people were making like Ethereum jokes. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Like, I'm, I'm pretty down. sure that was it. Cause like, B, like, I, like I shorted BTC. There was like a, there was like a low time frame structure break, <laughs> and like I shorted it, and like two minutes later, like it was, you know, it was like it had moved like 500 points. Um, and I think, so like I, I genuinely didn't know what it was, and someone said, "Oh, check out this Reuters article. Like Russia closed the pipeline." Yeah, I also saw this thing. I guess, uh, like a small uh, trader that's on Twitter. I guess he runs like a cafe and he was showing his like cafe gas and electricity bill. Like he's obviously a, in Europe. Um, his gas and electricity bill for that month was like 25,000 pounds. And he's like, this is more than my rent. I literally have God. to close. That's fucking terrible. So, yeah. so like, all right, obviously natural gas is like traded worldwide. Um, but, or like the Nord Stream pipeline does does that that doesn't supply all of Europe right like Europe has some oil and gas production um, in like the Scandinavian area I think there's even imports that come from like North Africa so um, is there any like information I'm missing there like but there are more yeah there are more sources for sure but I think that was the main source one of the main sources I'm not sure to be honest yeah but yeah yeah you're right there there are there are like natural gas reserves off the coast of uh, Norway, off the coast of Scotland. Um, so I, yeah, and, and yeah, I'm sure there are other um, parts of the world that we that we pump it in from. But I guess I think it was more like yeah. that was one of the big sources, you know. And I mean, can those areas like even you know increase production quickly enough to offset some of the lack of supply coming from from the east? Like I'm guessing, no, not quickly enough. Like over time. <laughs> I'm guessing, but uh, I genuinely like haven't a clue that kind of way. You know, I'll, I'll very quickly put up my hand and say I really don't know the answer to that question. But um, yeah, I, I think that'd be one for the old Google. That well, that's fine because our our chat will quickly correct us for anything. That <laughs> we, yeah, uh, we have uh, commodity experts and natural and oil, uh, you know, gas and oil experts in chat. Yeah. That's the um that's the position I adopted very early on in my streaming career was like just be very quick to admit complete ignorance like in any you know any subject that you're speaking on because it's far easier to um to be corrected when you adopt that kind of position of not knowing anything rather than rather than being pulled down by the mob from your high horse pretending you actually know what you're talking about. That's the uh that's a little uh, streaming alpha for you. <laughs> yeah, and if you have a hundred keyboard warriors that are just you know dying to be correct like that's like the strongest force <laughs> you could ever have like a hundred guys that want to be correct in chat is like the best thing to have on your side so you could like ask any questions in here and within 30 seconds someone's going to be biting at the bit to tell you like the best <laughs> answer so outsourcing the answer cool. <laughs> like a twitch-based think tank Exactly. Yeah, we would we would be uh, insolvent very quickly. I think. <laughs> All right. Just look um, at um, chart. It's actually it's kind of like running like two SFP type candle closes. Like most recently, below that that swing low, uh, it actually looks pretty bullish. This natural gas. Yeah. Or? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So like for me, like the key swing there is that low. Like going back to the the 22nd or just before it um the 21st i guess um yeah exactly just that swing low there the swing low that led to that high mm. so like as long as as long as like price is trading above that that's a good sign so like most recently there's two h4 closes that are that wicked below it and then closed above which is like pretty bullish sign in my eyes um so yeah as long as price as long as price man maintains that level and keeps trading above it 
probably looks good for a move up, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, this looks this looks pretty good. Like even from a higher time frame market structure, it's simple. Just higher, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. Yeah. All, All right. right. Probably hop over to ES now. All right. So we did gold. Did we want to do any corn futures? And by corn, I mean actual corn. <laughs> uh, this looks like a top. Yeah, yeah okay. definitely a top. Uh, uh, it actually kind of does. It looks like a bearish retest. It might come down to like quarterly open. Okay. And then there's this uh, commodities index that we... Oh, this guy got shit on, dude. Yeah, it did. Holy hell. Oh. Yeah, so it's just range round. 700 to 640 is the range. Yeah, it's just range bound. Yep. All right, we can get into uh, S&P. All right, so let me see. I, I tweeted out. I'm. Uh, it's actually the first equity trade I've taken in a long time. I decided to set up an account because you know last week we were talking about talking and whenever Sam was on, yeah, he was saying like you should take some of these trades and you know I was like you know what fuck it our like our trades have been so spot on when with ES like I would be doing myself a disservice when I start taking these trades. So I literally loaded some money up in a brokerage. Nice. And uh, yeah, I, I did actually get long ES or I guess SPX, whatever. So what, just like spot or what are you using? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like, so a, I got, uh, like a Vanguard ETF or something? Um, Literally like TD Ameritrade. Okay. Yeah, so I'm long three nine zero six. Three nine zero six. Okay, that seems like a great I got, entry. Bottom I got, tap. I got stopped at three eight five five. You got stopped? No, I. That's where my stop. Like oh, that's, that's where, where I your stop is. Okay, yeah, I'm gotcha. gonna put that three eight five five. I'm wrong. And. I'm looking to fill. There's a gap at 4226 that I'm looking to fill. On ES, there's a gap up there. So, Yeah, this chart probably didn't have it. No. So there's a, there's a nice little gap. Uh, you get, okay, I guess you could pull up ES if you wanted to. Oh, yeah. yeah so there's, a, there's a gap right above previous weekly high. So I wanted like a little wick right above that. And I think uh, this would be like a low time frame double bottom here. And I think we could just squeeze through that entire inefficiency there um, coming into the next week. Like, look at that. Look at that down. Yeah. And it's very clear exhaustion to the downside, too. So, you know, your first legs just sell after sell after sell. Then there's like a puke down and now we're, we're on this slow grind down now we're bottoming on the h4 there's a double bottom now we're clearly a, a lot of interest below uh you know 39 25 so i think it's a possible double bottom really clear in validation i think this trades super clean in my opinion so, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on ES. Like, I'm either going to, uh, yeah, this is a this is just a very clean version of what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah, this is, this yeah, is pretty a much part. took that swing low. Yeah, exactly. So like, it's it's still trending down, right? But you're just looking for a bounce after taking that swing low, like Correct. and continuation towards, I guess, the sell side liquidity target. Yep. Yeah. So this this chart is my thoughts in a very clean matter. Um, so yeah, you know, eight four double bottom. And if you look really low time frame, there's some like very clear, like trapping sellers into the lows. Um, if you like familiarize yourself with like how ES kind of works at those extremities. So I think I'm pretty confident in the trade. Um, so this upcoming week, I'm going to look for, you know, major squeezes to the upside. Um, and I also think like everyone's so unbelievably bearish because we've had we have done the same fucking pony show, you know, the past, you know, 
two or three rallies off of the highs. It rallies super hard into the highs, and then it just automatically pukes off with basically, you know, no punishment to to bears. And I'm not saying that, uh, you know, that can't happen again. But at some point, um, you know, the drives, after, the drives, uh, you know, it's the downside ultimately um, become weaker and weaker. And then, you know, you can't play the same setup or the same setup won't be, uh, you know, forgiving every single time. So one of these times they're going to get caught offside. And I think, you know, so far this has been the, the best chance to catch bears, the uh, bears offsides. So um, we had a really strong close into the daily. Uh, you know, yeah, we, we puked off the after we ran the Monday lows, but um, I don't think that's underside rejection. I think we're just confirming a low here. I would, to be honest, I wouldn't even feel confident if we just drove directly off the lows without coming back and retesting it. But super bullish retest, in my opinion, and uh, I really do think we're going to drive up and take out that that liquidity to the to the upside. Um, and like I said, alternatively, I can be wrong. Like I'm wrong a lot. I'll know if we take out three eight fifty five. I think to the left of there, there's like a small low, lower time frame order block that I really wanted to see hold. Below that that order block, uh, it kind of gets pretty messy. So yeah. Um, Did you think about buying calls instead of just like regular? Uh, to be honest, I'm not even really, like it's. I'm not even trying to make a lot of money off of it. It's just for me to be more invested ah. into like taking ES more seriously. Okay. Well, next so, time, next time you get long, uh, just like a spot ETF S and P, let me know so I can get some, some calls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I mean, I tweeted it. Like, oh, did you? Okay. On like, at like within like a minute of oh. getting, getting into the position i literally tweeted it okay somehow i missed it yeah and this is the cue for uh middle of the stream for you to plug me follow us in yourself oh right yeah so to everyone that listening chat uh make sure you're following first folis uh which is at folis i believe underscore exactly at folis underscore yeah that's that's the that's the one yeah, if somebody wants to link it in chat, that'd be amazing. Uh, and then uh, mistakes is at mistakes trader on Twitter. Be sure to give those guys a follow. Uh, follow us. What do you and what what do you think? Do you think we're gonna drive higher from from this, or do you think we're going to keep pushing to the downside here, just trending down? Uh, sorry, this is which chart? This is um, ES. The one we're just looking at. Or SPX, yeah. either one. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much as I said. Uh, like I think now that we've taken now that we've taken that that swing low, um, there's a decent possibility of a bounce. Like there's actually there's an F, FEG that I didn't draw on the chart, but like there is an imbalance there even below the imbalance that you're targeting around like four one, I guess, um, which also could be like a possible possible area to target um but yeah it wouldn't surprise me like the move down there was so much displacement and so much inefficiency that would not surprise me to see uh a bounce from here even even if only to fill those Im imbalances and then continue to the downside like ultimately i think the like the high time frame narrative uh suggests that you know the low the low is around um like 3650 i think it is uh get run but yeah, until then, like, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me to see a retrace uh, to rebalance price before continuation. Yeah, and uh, I'm I'm along the same lines of, I don't think we bounce here and just, like, rip to new highs. Like, this doesn't become a higher low on in bullish, like, higher time frame bullish market structure. I just, I'm looking for, you know, a juicy move to the upside to fill inefficiency, grab uh, the move to the upside. And I think it's going to give us some really nice, juicy shorting opportunities. Yeah. The thing is like you, you often see in, in those kind of trend continuation moves, like when the initial displacement is too great and it leaves like something like an H12 or daily or H4 imbalance, 
Like it's just it's almost easy mode when it comes to tra uh, to 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 entering a trade is you just you look for an entry on a retrace to to fill one of those imbalances. Um and like depending on your risk app, I you know, you can even you can even shoot for like the lowest imbalance, you know, and just get a get a real loose entry, like just get into the position with your stop above the above the high or above the low, whatever it is. Um, you know, and you can you can swing that position all the way to like the structural continuation, you know, because you're trading with the trend, right? You're just you're just looking for an entry on a retrace. So it's like those trades are actually really comfy, especially if you find like if you can find a decent trending move, like those have been pretty rare in in crypto, which is what I'm trading mostly um, lately. But like, yeah, if you if you find like if you find prices moving in a certain direction, uh, it can be the easiest trade in the world just to just to get in on a retrace. Um, is that kind then, of one of your one hundred and one setups? Like, kind of, yeah. It's 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 pretty much yeah. It's it's pretty much like high time frame uh, structure break, you know, t in in one direction. Uh, with like a big initial displacement, then you wait for like a retrace into that uh, into that imbalance, and then you look for pretty much like a fractal setup on a lower time frame inside that high time frame imbalance. Right, you look for a break of structure leaving a, a, a an imbalance, and then you get in like on that on that retrace. Then, so it's like yeah, like a good example would be like. Would be like can you map one out for us i just like want chat to be able to, to visualize like yeah you know what let me do one better for you. If, if you give me uh one minute i'll uh i'll go pull something out from one of my folders all right yeah cool that'd be awesome thanks um so yeah while he's pulling that up chat like i said uh you know this upcoming week tomorrow's holiday but um uh once uh futures open on es I, uh, maybe a quick liquidity grab to the downside. I think these these lower wicks should hold, though. And I'm looking for a nice fat move to the upside. I think. So, uh, I don't know. Do you do you see that there, Luke? Yeah, I'm pulling it up now. Perfect. Yeah. So that's that's an example. Like you have like you basically have like uh, consolidation PA right at a certain level, and then like price breaks out of that consolidation in one direction like you know causes a structure break and like that initial move leaves leaves like pretty big imbalance and then you're just looking for a retrace into that imbalance and like a lower time frame repetition of that pattern inside that higher time frame imbalance like a low time frame uh imbalance a low time frame break structure um and yeah it's just i find like they're very comfy trades like they're pretty it's 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 not right. rocket science right it's pretty basic price action principles but like they're very comfy trades because you're trading pro trend um and you're trading like in my in my mind in my fairly limited experience like they're they're pretty high probability setups right you're not you're not like catching some bottom or you know you're not trying to there's very limited guesswork involved you're just you're playing off confirmations the whole time right and it's pro trend so they're it's it's comfy right yeah and this is something that i like brought up and I continuously bring up with chat, and it's so true in this this price action as well. Is like catching one of these trades usually turn into like juicy P and L, like, and you're not really stressing over it. So being able, like, I would feel more confident putting size towards a setup like this, opposed to like just buying the highs and lows of a range. So like getting in on a setup like this during range, I mean during trend continuation, is going to yield you a lot much larger profit than just taking, you know, the the extremities of a range trade. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, like stuff like this, you know, like you can see there from the from the short tool, you know, it's it's not like a, a twenty or trade. It's like a probably like a three or two point five or something. But that's the thing, like. If you wait, like you're not entering on the first, you know, retrace to fill that initial imbalance. You're waiting for confirmation. You know, you're not looking, as you said, you're not wait. You're not like, trying to catch like the very top of the move. You're waiting until you have the necessary uh, confirmations, and then you're entering with size because at that point you have. Well, I, I guess the the argument is that you have the requisite confirmation that your idea is going to be correct or that it has a high probability of playing out, right? So it gives you the conviction to enter that trade with a decent amount of size. And hopefully then, you know, you can, as you say, you know, you can reap the profit from that, 
from that move, even though like, even though like if you look at that entire move, like from the Pico top of that move uh, to the bottom, like if you enter that short where, where I have the tool drawn, you're pretty much catching like, what, like 45% of that move, like the last 40% of that move or something like that. But it's like, that's absolutely enough. Um, if you, if you, if you enter with conviction and size, because at that point, like you have the confirmation that that, that price is going to, is going to move in your favor, right? Yeah. And, uh, that's kind of like what a ma my major bread and butter is too. And, you know, I, I always mention it, but I'm a, I'm like a conviction type trader. So if I believe price is going to travel in a direction, I usually like put my nuts on the line. Right. And that's like how I'm usually like, that's a, uh, you know, one of my biggest strengths, but that's also like a huge weakness. And like, I can lose a lot of money and I've lost a lot of money previously because like I have conviction in my trades and like why I wanted you to pull this up is because like, this is so unbelievably clean. And like, a, this is a lot of like how my setups are. I use trend lines kind of the same way you use like FVGs, but the trend line breaks and like retests are like a lot of my bread and butter. So I'm, you know, seeing price action around like a trend line break is, uh, is usually a lot of confirmation for me to get in size. So yeah, it's, you know, these are like very high probability trades that you should be confident in being biased towards the direction. So being able to, you know, really put size towards these types of trades um, is like how you compound an account. But that was just a little rant that I wanted to uh, to chat, chat to understand that just like range bound conditions. Yeah, if a range held five times, it's probably going to hold six. But like those range trading is a lot less... Uh, in my opinion, it's a lot less certain than range continuation, getting in on trend line breaks and filling FBGs. Um, so yeah, just my two cents. Good deal. Well, uh, I guess I don't know how much time you guys have left, but um, we can just run through crypto next. <laughs> yeah, let's hop in. Let's hop in Bitcoin. Yeah. All right. So we got the futures, CME Bitcoin futures here. Well, Can we hop on that rally and see if we have any gaps? Because that's really all I use uh, the CME Bitcoin for. Is I, I want to look for gaps. Yeah, uh, what like time frame? Hourly, hourly. If possible. Um. Doesn't. Yeah. So good. it looks like we really don't have any any gaps of liquidity, like in the close range for taking. So we could probably just hop over to the standard X XPT later. This works. Yeah, so I think uh and it's it's interesting because I'm long, I know Hollis is, is short, so like and you know, we're both both have like extremity entries and it's just like it's not a guessing game who's right, but like this is just an example of like where you know we're both just as right as one another, like we're both in profit, right? Um so I know I'm personally long from, let me see here, 19713. So we posted in the Discord when we got long. Um, yeah, it's good enough. And basically, I, uh, I've i been sitting in this since, um, since that large, uh, since the first wick there on the left side. Um, I uh, know one more to the left. This one? Yeah, yeah. So that's where I got in. Um posting the Discord live when we got in. And then I added on the second wick last night. So I'm I'm like a pretty decent size. And I'm targeting uh let me see here. My upside targets are twenty thousand seven hundred and fifty is my first target. I want that order block to kind of be tested, possibly ran. And if we clear that, I think it's going to be a quick move to like 22,400 is my next TP. I think there's a there's an FEG up near like 22,6 or something. On the hourly? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's like F, there's fair value gaps. Yeah, there's a couple up here. So I'm just taking the lowest one because, again, we are at the end of the day, like we are still on a downtrend. So. The lowest FVG above 22K is what I'm taking, which I think is like 22.3, 22.4, some shit like that. 
Um, yeah. So that's like that's my second TP. So that's my current setup. I got stops down at um nineteen three five is where my stops are. I would allow a wick below to uh, to grab this liquidity on the you know these what quadruple lows. But yeah, right now we're just um, I'm just ch- chilling long. If I get stopped out, I get stopped out. I, I think Ethereum looks a little better, a little, little bit better. But yeah, I'm uh, really not much else to do here. This is uh, why I got long was yeah, like it, it's kind of ridiculous that it's holding, but the, I'm just playing it as a range. And if we start rejecting off Monday highs like right away, then I'll just probably cut. But those are my upside targets, the ones that I just laid out. And um, this reminds me a lot of 40k before the last all-time high was taken. We had like 40k was impenetrable, and yeah, that was like during a uh, macro uptrend, so a lot different. But um, you know, fractals tend to play out. I remember that there was like five retests, <laughs> like the yeah. impenetrable wall. Yeah. So if you look, um, it's almost one to one. Like the the actual fractal is unbelievable, which is also kind of scary because, like, I'm clearly not the only person that that sees it, right? Um, but yeah, that's kind of my thought process: is our risk versus reward along from the the very very lows. Is a uh, I think pretty good play, right? You had two hundred dollar, three hundred dollar invalidation. Your upside is fifteen, twenty percent. If you feel like it can squeeze up, and uh, you know, a little bit confluence is like I'm also long ES. So I think if ES juices, right, Bitcoin is going to follow because it's now it's the BTC five hundred. Um, yeah. So that's uh, that's my position. So I think uh, you know you have two options. Downside's going to get wicked. So they're going to buy back and it's going to rip. Um, downside breaks, you have underside retest, downtrend continuation, then we just have one of these ranges form at $500 lower. Um, or like this last fourth drive out of the lows is a fractal of the 40k bottom that, that we had. And uh, we're going to drive up and probably fill some inefficiencies above. So it's my current processes. I know, like you said, fall, I th- uh, you're in a position, right? Yeah, so I'm currently short from 20.3. Um, and I actually came super close to my, like my, my, my target is just below the lows. Right. So I was actually, I was busy this afternoon. I wasn't like monitoring the position, but we came, we came like super close. Like we, we pretty much tapped, like we came within like a hundred points of my take profit and then started bouncing. So I I probably would have closed it if I was at my desk. But, uh, by the time I got back, like it was pretty much where it is now, like 19.8 or 19.85. So like, I was just like, to be honest, um, yeah, like, as I said earlier in the stream, it's like my, my directional bias is informed, like almost completely by structure and liquidity. And of those two liquidity is the, the, I, I place the greater importance on liquidity. So like, I typically will play from liquidity pool to liquidity pool, right? Because that's what, that's what, to my interpretation of charts and to my interpretation of, of price action, like that's what price is trying to do. It is always seeking liquidity. And once a liquidity objective is satisfied at a certain level, that's why you typically get moves or, or you can anticipate moves uh, towards other levels, you know, and that's that's pretty much how I play. And then like structure obviously informs that bias because I'm I'm trying to... I'm trying to anticipate what the next liquidity pool is going to be, right? Is it like, I mean, it, there's only two directions, right? Is it going to be to the upside or is it going to be to the downside? And like structure informs that decision making process. So, like, that's kind of my bias at the moment. Um, like the daily, the H12, the H4, all bearish to my view. Um, the major liquidity draw right now uh, is to the downside because, as you said, means we have these qualos so yeah to me like like there's the there's that almost like a gut feeling that you're completely right and we just rip from here but like my system says that we take the lows and i kind of have to you know it's the the eternal battle as a trader you try and pay attention to um to the thing that is back tested which uh funnily enough is not my emotions right so i'm trying to no absolutely Trying to yeah. try to listen to what makes sense to me. So yeah, I mean, like that's what I'm 
that's what I'm going off here. Um, so yeah, as I said, short from twenty point three. I'm I'm definitely not going to lose money on this trade. Uh, like if it, if it actually if it pops from here, I'll probably just close and take my you know hundred point move or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I actually I I have a chart there in the in the Discord chat. Uh, uh, yeah. Luke, if you if you is it a Bitcoin one? I might have yeah, exactly. Up. Is it this one? So, well, no, that's, but we can actually talk about that for a second. So that was kind of um, pretty much like further to the point that Miz just made about, you know, sweeping the, the lows and then bouncing back up. Like that's kind of, that's what I would need to see to get long. Like I have no interest longing here. Um, you know, as I said, I think there's a decent chance we pop, but, um, you know, for my system, at least that that's the very minimum I would need to see before I get long. So to me, that's a... Uh, liquidity targets satisfied right so we've taken the lows um and then like those lines that you see there like that's just a break of structure right break of structure on whatever time frame that is you know m15 m30 h1 h4 whatever it is right um and then like a, a kind of a valid retest of that displacement move it's so, like that's that's pretty much like that that to me as i discussed earlier like that would satisfy my liquidity uh, and structure bias, right? Because at that point, I'm thinking, okay, the major liquidity target at this level has been satisfied, and structure is now suggesting that we push to the upside. And like, also, there are pretty much like equal highs, right, above this above this range, which is one of the reasons actually why I think like it's not not crazy to think that we pop. Yeah, and then this is the the short. I mean, like, it's kind of like it it looks ugly here to be honest. Like I'm looking at that and I'm thinking that's a poorly managed trade, but yeah, I, I like I I, <laughs> I there's no defending that uh, it kind of is cuz I I let it retrace from sorry. <laughs> you were so close at 19.55. Yeah, yeah, like I pretty much just let it retrace. Um I've actually since lowered my uh lowered my target a bit because just because of the added buildup in liquidity i think there's a decent chance that we wick like a couple of hundred points if we do take the lows so it's more like a 3.2 or trade now or 3.1 or trade uh, but yeah that's kind of what i'm looking at like again i'm not going to lose money on this i think if we do pump from here like i have that feg marked out like it's an hourly feg pretty much like around my entry so if we push through that and don't show any signs of rejection then i'll, I'll just close and i'll I'll take the break even or whatever it is. Um, but until that point, like until my trade idea has been invalidated, like that's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, that, that's yeah. a really good point you made is that I think like adjusting TPs is also super important whenever your TP is missed, but then there's like a range build up. Whereas, you know, if we were to, you know, if we swept the lows back in the, you know, the first of September, that's going to be a lot different than sweeping the lows now, I think. I think now we would likely not just a quick stab below, grab and, and pump. Whereas, you know, back on the 1st of September, I think that would be a lot more likely. So I think that's a really good point that you're saying that you have to dynamically kind of adjust per, you know, the, the, the range of the conditions, um, you know, as liquidity builds up within, you know, a, a tighter range. Right, exactly, because I, I do think like if we drop below this range, like there's a good chance of getting like yeah, like a two or three hundred point wick. Um, and, and like if we don't get it and and we sweep and then you know push back up, buyer step in, like I'll just close at that point. Hopefully, I won't be um entertaining guests uh, at that stage. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much what I'm what I'm thinking. Yeah, can you uh, uh like can you bring up that the first Bitcoin chart that we had uh from from Paulus? Yeah, uh, one sec one over this one yep okay yeah so do you think uh you know i was kind of talking with uh you know in the discord with uh with R ronnie it's an, uh, another till street trader um what do you think about the july lows do you think those need to hold or uh you think those are fine being swept i think that might be a pretty key level um so yeah like i was looking at them i i, I guess the thing is so like it's it's pretty much like there are two relatively equal lows there. I think they're about 150 or 200 points apart. Um, to me, like that's another liquidity objective. Like I don't think I, I think it's perfectly valid to think that we sweep lows here and then like push to the upside. Like I wouldn't be thinking, oh no, we have to take those July lows or else this move up is is invalid. Like to me, that's a that's like a, a further 
liquidity target. And that's not to say that we don't take them. But for me, like, I'll give you an example. For me, if we pushed up from here, I would be thinking I'm very suspicious of this move up because there's been no there's been no sell side liquidity um, objective satisfied. But if we swept these, you know, these quad lows, as we're calling them, and then started putting in some 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 bullish PA, for me, that would be a completely valid move. I don't think we need to take those July lows in order for uh, a substantial upside move uh, to to start. Um, but yeah, they are definitely a valid liquidity target. And to be honest, if price, like, as you said earlier on, Miz, if price pushes below this current range and then like rejects off the, the retest, right, then that's that's the next target. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's super bad. So the, what I, yeah, kind of along my thoughts is I think if we sweep these lows, uh those July lows, those kind of equal lows you have there, need to hold. Otherwise, we're I think we might get some type of puke or you know like more cascade type price action we haven't seen in a while, uh, because below those lows it's just like thin air. Um, so, and uh, you know if you look back at those lows, that's actually what uh what had our move to the upside or kind of what drove our move towards that twenty five k price. So there was clearly a lot of demand. Um, you need to go to the left, I think. Oh, no, it's right there. It's right there. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so we bounced from the 17K, and then that uh, the equal lows there, it's to the in the current range, Luke, uh, around 19,000. Those two, yeah, those right two here. lows there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. so that's kind of what drove us towards 20K, though. Um, so if those get taken, or 25k, so if those get taken, it's like the demand for uh, for higher prices is not there. And I think you're going to be aiming towards those like 17k lows. So yeah, I think I would get super bearish if we end up taking July lows. Yeah, there's a, a really great trader in our in our Discord, um, a guy called Gunny, and like he is like he is 100% banking on uh like 10 12k bitcoin and like his ta is backing him up on that um so yeah i i mean it's not unreasonable i i i'm definitely it's something i've mentioned on my streams before i'm like i don't really like making those kind of macro move predictions it's just not really my style like i i much prefer playing level to level and just um reacting from the pa as it's given but uh, so yeah i'm like i'm not really interested in like predicting what like what price bitcoin will be in eight weeks time that like that doesn't really have any bearing on my trading I, i'm not sure are you the same is but um like i have like a daily bias and that's obviously that obviously informs my low time frame intraday trading but like i'm i'm far more concerned with that than i am like you know guessing what the what the high what the 2022 high will be or you know what what price uh, bitcoin will be at christmas you know what i mean that that doesn't really like that's that's interesting speculation, but like I'm not only do I not have like the the technical chops to like g estimate that accurately, but it just doesn't it doesn't like doesn't really have too much bearing on my trading. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and and that that is like uh, super important because some people uh, are very very successful with that kind of sentiment higher time frame. Where are we going? Are we going to be at twelve k? Some people make a lot of money off that. Like I brought up, uh, I think Hasaka's really good at like figuring out how low the market's going to go. There's a, uh, who else did I, um, I think like GCR is also really good at timing tops. But like for me personally, like I, ha I have like kind of a weekly, you know, targets to the upside and downside. And then, you know, a couple days into the week, I'll figure out if we're heading for the upper or lower downside or upper targets or downside targets. And then, you know, a lot of it is just intraday, like level to level. I think, like me personally, that's how I do super well. You you take out a lot of the macro noise with uh, doing lower time frame entries and then kind of intraday swings. Um, so just level to level, like intraday trading, is like where I personally found. I think, and I think retail has the best edge still to this day. Um, so that is just kind of my thoughts, and that's kind of like what I build my system around is just intraday. I'm I think I'm like uh, you know my trade time is usually like four to eight hours maximum. Um, 
really not low time frame scalping either. There's a lot of noise. So I think finding that in between of like the macro and the micro is like where I personally do best. Yeah, I would say I'm something similar, actually. Like, I typically don't hold positions overnight. Now, that said, the current position I'm in, I opened on Friday, which is probably unusual for me. Um, but yeah, I typically, yeah, pro probably the same time frame, to be honest, four to eight hours. Um, definitely, like, try and close out of all positions or at least substantially de-risk before I uh, go to bed. Yeah, and that, you know, like... Again, you know, people have like the people are tick traders, you know, 15 second traders, one minute traders, and then people are, uh, you know, weekly traders. But, um, you know, I think, you know, very, very low time frame. Uh, there's a lot of noise and then, you know, higher time frame, there's more macro noise. So um, I really like that intraday trading where you can, you know, days can trend up even though you're in a downtrend, vice versa. So I kind of like, uh, you know, that in particular. So, um I have no idea what we were talking about previously, but I think, we're on the, I think we probably have pretty similar styles. Um, yeah. Um, just before we move off from BTC, um, uh, Luke, could we just look at the that uh, H12 chart that I sent into the sure. chat? I think it was the, the third chart down for, for me. Okay, let me see if I have it. Yeah, it might, it might not be up there yet, but it's, it's the third chart posted in okay. the Discord chat. I think I've got it. So yeah, just touching on kind of what we were just chatting about there. Yeah, exactly. So this is just kind of um, a little bit of a higher time frame look at BTC and kind of like possible possible downside draws. So like we had like after this move down, um, there was like a monthly FVG uh, to the top side, which which we partly filled, like we kind of had like a three percent fill before moving down, um, and now like it's just so obvious to me looking at these high time frame charts that now have this monthly FVG below, like this big monthly imbalance that hasn't been filled, um, and as Ms spoke about earlier, like the those July lows, like they're valid lows, like they're valid liquidity targets. Um, obviously, these equal lows we have here now, like if I was looking at this. Like if you actually pull the chart back and look at, you know, like the weekly or something like that, I, I don't typically do that, but you know, it just looks like it genuinely looks like it wants much lower. You know what I mean? Like the structure suggests so, the liquidity suggests so. Um, it just seems like it it probably goes lower before we see any substantial bounce. Um, but again, like that's not really I don't really like doing those macro predictions, but I think I think it's not unreasonable to think that the downside isn't done yet. <laughs> if, that, if I can use double negatives there. Yeah, this is uh, this is super clean. So this is what I mean. You can see in this chart perfectly. Like that July, it's like 11th or 12th low. We have that huge chat ass candle. Um, or that huge wick. That then drove us into like that 24k high. And then, you know, that... um. No, so uh, it's to the left. It's it's the the low. Oh, the low on July fourteenth ish, probably. Right here. Nope, to the right. This one to the right of that. Yeah, one yeah. One more. This one. One more. Okay, yeah, here we go. That one and that okay. one. Okay, okay. Yeah, now, now look at that. Look at that wick. That's like really, really bullish. So they tried to they try to have downtrend continuation from that um, from that top top on the the previous week. But they obviously didn't have enough downside momentum to, to drive it through. And it ended up looking like a lot of sellers got trapped in the bottom. They bought it back super quickly, trapped. And, uh, you know, that's when they just up only into the 24K area. Um, and then, you know, after that huge sell off, it looks like it was very controlled selling into that. Uh, what is this? Is the six hour? Or that is the H12, 12 hour. Okay, 12 hour. Yeah, and then they drove it into that H12 OB, which ended up, looks like it was right, like wicked and then ended up holding. And then we drove into the, the highs at 25K. So, yeah, I think uh, that was kind of our place to, to go higher. Uh, we might be range bound here, but, you know, I, we, we're either going to pop and fill in these, uh, these inefficiencies, or we, we lose July lows, and then I'm unbelievably bearish. Because um, this FVG that's below our current lows at 17.6 are just asking to be filled. 
What time so frame? So I think FVG? Uh, right here. It's on this chart. Oh yeah, it's a very that's, low, a, that's a monthly low. FVG there. Yeah, the, the monthly like, the FVG at the box at the bottom. Oh god. Yeah, down to like fifteen. So yeah, I mean, I think if uh, if we don't start driving higher and we start taking those July lows, wouldn't be surprised if we see fifteen k soon after. It's kind of like what you said, um, Maze, like about there being thin air below this current range because it, it, there pretty much is. Like if you even if you pull like a volume profile on like the last like two years of price action, um, pretty much from like that initial pump from 10k. Um, yeah, you'll see that like <laughs> there's just nothing. There's just nothing at all below where we are now. Um, like pretty much until you get to yeah, like kind of like 12k. Yeah, so it's a bit concerning. Um, like bulls need to step in, uh, like now, and they need to uh, keep it above the the July low. So yeah, if there's if there's any prices that I could, or any levels that I would watch, it would be a reaction off the July lows. You kind of you really don't even want to see them swept, to be honest. Um, if you if you are bullish, um, but you know. Yeah, this is kind of my key levels and then upside targets obviously you know if you start rejecting after filling fvgs then it's gonna you know turn sour super quickly um but if you end up you know let's just say you know for conversation purposes if we end up pushing through all the fvgs and start contesting highs at 24 25k um, I think next would be like twenty eight five or something. So those are the two macro ranges I think we want to we want to operate in. If you're not looking for a trending market, if you're looking for a more range bound market. I'd say you know eighteen nine to like twenty eight five are probably two key areas. Um, a break to either side is probably going to be pretty violent. Yeah, that's kind of my uh, overall thoughts on, on the corn. Yeah. Uh, we can move to uh, East. Yeah, the East's been unbelievably strong. Um, look real so, cool. ETH is, I'm also long ETH currently. Uh, I'm long at 1549. Yeah, I just wanted to pull out the, the one minute to see. Okay. All right. Here's ETH. Get the 12 hour going. Yeah, so I'm still long on this as well. Uh, this in Bitcoin, right? Um, a little bit bigger size than this just because it's been a higher beta play. So the upside's been pretty strong with the whole merge meme bullshit. Um, but where am I? I'm long 1549. And I'm targeting uh, 1750. Okay, to take out the high. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, to run the high and kind of form some type of distributive top. Makes sense. So yeah, uh, same shit here too. My uh, my invalidation for uh, for ETH is um, 1500. Um, I'd probably cut it before then, but um, I think, like as a psychological level, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty good area. We've also got um, Polis. This is your ETH chart, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that was kind of <laughs> like anytime you see me drawing a bar pattern. Anytime you see me using the the bar pattern tool, you can uh, pretty safely assume that like the the post is at least fifty percent a shit post. Um, yeah, I was kind of like, yeah, just looking at, again like this is just informed by by structural liquidity. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually talk about ETH BTC first because um, to me that's the more interesting chart. Like for my money, ETH BTC has been like probably the most interesting or one of the most interesting charts in crypto over the last few months so i actually posted two charts in the in the chat um yeah Luke, but uh yeah so like pretty much yeah the, the three-day one yeah so this is super interesting like like for anyone wanting to to trade ranges like this is the cleanest range you will ever see in any market like there is nothing cleaner than this right you have a trending move which is the blue box 
right? Comes to an end, creates a swing high, creates a swing swing low. There are your range extremities, right? Price moves back towards the swing the swing high, takes liquidity at the the range high, moves back towards the swing low, takes liquidity at the range low, and now it's pushing back up towards the range high. So it's like trending move. Range established, liquidity taken to one side, liquidity taken to the other side, and now moving back inside the range, right? So it's like unbelievably clean textbook PA from uh, from ETH BTC. Um, and actually here, so like three or four weeks ago, um, I guess like more like two weeks ago, uh, we kind of hit the like the range high and started rejecting. And I was thinking, okay, here we go. Like this is like a pretty clean like three tap like th this range will continue to be the cleanest range in all the crypto because we've just you know trip tapped the the range high and we're going to move back down towards the range lows um but no it actually surprisingly enough that hasn't happened at all so if you just flick into the the h12 chart there um yeah so like this is just the h12 on on eth btc like this is incredibly bullish right so even though we've had a little bit of a pullback from the highs um, the structure is still remarkably bullish, right? Like there's been no real breakdown. Like the pullback is still firmly within the parameters of bullish structure. And yeah, to be honest, like again, the bar pattern tool, uh, you can safely say that, you know, I'm kind of shit posting here, but yeah, I honestly wouldn't surprise me to see us just run the 2021 high and just, just push a little higher. Like I know the merge uh, is like, what, two weeks away or less than two weeks away. Mm -hmm. Um and I really don't know how that's gonna how that's gonna affect things, but um, yeah, at least like for the time being, like uh, until until that point, like I really don't see like the the like people keep calling for the end of the bullish narrative, but like I haven't seen it at all. Like, and I, I think that until you really see some firm signs of reversal, uh, yeah, for for my money, like I just don't, I never feel, I never feel comfy shorting ETH uh, over BTC. It just feels like backing the wrong horse probably um and vice versa if, you, if you're longing something i just think yeah like obviously of the eth is the higher beta asset so it's gonna it's gonna move more relative to like the market average when you you know when you get a, an upside move or a downside move but uh yeah i do think uh i do think the bullish narrative isn't over yet i think eth btc has some has some uh room remaining to the upside but yeah super interesting chart like just from a just from a purely like PA knowledge perspective, like I honestly find myself just looking at it. It's it's remarkably um, insightful. Uh, really clean PA, like on the high time frame and on the lower time frame. Yeah, yeah, and to, to kind of add what you're saying, uh, like the seventeenth of, uh, I guess it'd be July on this chart, up until about the uh, August seventeenth. So this entire like uptrend grind super fucking bullish higher high higher low higher high until this blow off top and then i remember every single person was saying that's the end but really it's just been kind of bull flagging like there's a slight downtrending slope but it's holding range pretty cleanly exactly and that's kind of why i have those blue highlighters in there it's it's to show you visually that like we just put in a higher low right so it's like yeah exactly what you said me is like people were saying okay here this is finally the end of the bullish narrative but like ultimately we pulled back and it wasn't even a high momentum pullback like if you look at the momentum of that most recent leg up compared to the pullback like the momentum on the move up is like three times as forceful as the as the pullback on the way down uh, and then we just put in a higher low so like from from a structure point of view it's it's still completely bullish like there's been there hasn't even been like we haven't even wicked below that low you know there hasn't even been an inkling of a break of structure so yeah pretty much agree with what you say there yeah and i'm targeting uh i mean i i don't personally trade this but obviously it's you know it gives you a kind of a litmus test on on where you're at with alts as well as eth in comparison to the move of bitcoin so I would probably look to stop longing ETH after we crack that uh, zero not zero nine level, um, kind of right above the twenty twenty one highs. I think you'll probably, um, I'd probably start de-risking from from ETH and going a bit more flat towards uh, back to trading Bitcoin. But yeah, kind of uh, you know all of my longer longer side trades have been heavily weighted with ETH. Um, I mean, generally speaking, I trade eighty percent Bitcoin and like. 
20% alts and of that 20% of the alts, ETHs included. So I trade almost exclusively Bitcoin um, until, you know, the past couple of months. It just doesn't make sense not to trade ETH, especially in these these markets. Um, you know, you have if you look on the USD pair, like some of the exchanges have really crazy downside wicks, but the wicks are bought up so fucking quickly um, that I think uh, ha always having stinky bids um, below some some like lower time frame order blocks, you can uh, you can kind of fill some some nice uh, some nice entries. But I've been uh, been long ETH for the past, or you know, taking longs on ETH opposed to Bitcoin the past couple of months, and then most of my shorts have been uh, have been for for Bitcoin. So, you know, the higher, like you said, the higher beta asset. Why would you short a higher beta asset whenever you could, uh, you know, short a lower beta asset um, that would um, ultimately, you know, not bounce as, as hard? So. Uh, same thing with alts, right? If if ETH's doing well, alts, generally speaking, do pretty decent. And I, I'll keep bringing this up that the difference between bear and bull market uptrends are bull market uptrends, almost everything goes up. But in bearish market uptrends, the issue is, is that there's not enough liquidity to go around. Yeah. So finding those few altcoins that, that perform well, they're going to perform unbelievably well because that's where all the money's flowing in. And, you know, on like a 10% pump, some altcoins... Where generally speaking, you expect them to outperform Bitcoin. Uh, you know they're barely moving at all, just because, like I said, not not enough liquidity to go around right now in the bearish market conditions. So, I would um, I would suggest focusing on you know those those coins that have the money flowing into them, the higher volumes, and kind of targeting those coins to get long. And then I would look to short Bitcoin because right now shorting Bitcoin, in my opinion, has been the the higher uh the easier short to take um and it's kind of just like a general rule of thumb if it's super hard to short a coin stop shorting it like just short another coin that's easy to short and it's the same thing as like if a coin if you're getting stopped out on a coin uh that you're getting long on and it's not obeying clean market structure it probably isn't the best coin to long find something else that's obeying market structure a bit more and uh you know there's just kind of two little little uh bits of advice you know from, from from me and something that i've personally implemented so yeah you see that a lot like where um and, and it's definitely something that i've fallen victim to in the past where like the market suddenly shows sign of weakness like shows a sign of weakness after i don't know maybe either pumping or just consolidating and like there's almost this like urge to go for the overextended asset you know what i mean you're like looking through your watch list and like maybe everything's down like one or two percent you might be forecasting an even bigger move and like you almost have the urge to short the thing that's up six percent you know what i mean because you're like oh that's overextended uh it'll give me a better entry because the pullback will be greater right but actually absolutely you can you can sometimes get those moves and you catch the pico top of an asset that genuinely is overextended but like more often than not like recently it was a good example like a lot of guys trying to short adam in my feed you know um which was just like super bullish and like constantly putting in uh green days um you know while while the market was kind of like pulling back or just consolidating and like adam just kept on you know kept on putting in new you know kept on putting in new local highs uh like it didn't look weak at all and i was just thinking like that's that's a good example because it's you're looking at something you're thinking oh this will give me a good a good entry because it's it's already pumped so much that like the dump will be greater but i think that's usually false logic and actually as you say um is you know in in these kind of bear market pumps like you do get one asset that that'll just it'll it'll outperform others and that might that narrative might continue like for a number of days even weeks you know and and at that point if you're looking to short it uh you're kind of just playing a guessing game right you're just trying to predict when that bull when, when that bullish move will end and when it'll fall back into like you know correlation or whatever um but again that's you're just that's guesswork right that's not that's not it's not really good trading in a sense because there's so much is left up to chance. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's like, I really try and keep shit left curve in trending markets. Like in a bear market, don't short coins that are going up, <laughs> short coins that are going down. Like it's yes. just 
just keep it like the keep it simple stupid is like really relevant in these market conditions um yeah i remember all shorting, that look uh, like they're the bed. At, uh, this is like months and months ago but shorting axis before it like pumped big time uh market conditions were bearish and i think i was shorting axis around nine dollars before it went to like over 100, 100 yeah. yeah yeah so that, that's what i'm saying like you got to understand that there's like so many five heads in this community too. And then, you know, people with money, you know, obviously hop on the five head trends. And the whole idea is, is that people want to grasp to something, to some type of narrative. So they'll like generate bullshit narratives just to pump in like these conditions because people are so bored and just like, don't get on the wrong side of these bullshit moves because then you end up losing money because either A, you're stubborn, or B, you know, you're you're trying to uh, you know, catch some type of, you know, PL that you can post on your Twitter feed that's usually just not worth it. Like stick to the shit that's gonna, you know, continuously compound your balance so that whenever the market's on easy mode again, then you'll have the ammo to make like the the real cash. So just speaking about like catching tops, I just posted um uh it's like a twitter post i made back in april it was like talking about a luna short and i actually ended up taking this so like the short was like 117 or something like that now in fairness my, my targets were pretty conservative um and i'm pretty sure like i would have like exited the full position like long before it hit you know zero but i actually got stopped out on this position so like my stop was like one two zero or one two one and like i got wicked out on a stop and like three or four days later luna was like 60 bucks and then like <laughs> a week a week later it was under a dollar you know what i mean yeah yeah it's pretty Honestly. funny like my in that in that post i say like luna short idea looks a bit heavy <laughs> you know like a bit. Mon monkey monkey paul curls you know <laughs> oh, God. Little did you know. i know what a fucking short um i remember I posted a short. It was like around forty dollars, going off memory. It's like forty or fifty dollars, and it was like the actual hourly top before the move to like zero. And I, Luke, I know you remember this perfectly, like because you took the trade as well. But I remember posting, I'm like, yeah, this short, and I ended up like closing it for like ten or fifteen percent. I was like, holy shit! I just caught like a fat ass move. It was like a two hour ten percent move. I was like, this is incredible, right? And there was like some decent size on it, and like little yeah. did I know, like all I had to do was not do anything, and I would have made so much money. <laughs> that that's the Luna trade, right? Yeah, you remember the, that one? It was right? like a Luna, a Luna short around like thirty four dollars, I think. Yes, yeah, did you remember it? Oh, yeah. It was literally the top. Of, yeah, before the actual, like, going to zero. Yeah. Before the actual real, like, move to zero. Unbelievable. But, yeah, that's that's my little funny Luna story. But, yeah, I mean, that, that's exactly what you're saying. And, like, the other thing is, is that just always think, if you catch a top, one, you, you don't know it's the top, and two, the chances of you actually holding it to the low are, like, likely zero. Like you're going to TP so far before it actually hitting the low price target. It's not even worth trying to catch tops or bottoms. Like let, let market structure form, let shit kind of settle out, decide uh, direction. And then you can hop in with a, um, you know, with defined risk. But I think the whole moral of this chat is stop guessing in these market conditions and just take the easy trades. Cause there's plenty of easy trades to take. Yeah, it's it's like what I what I showed earlier in that um in that uh trade setup uh um like drawing it, it's it's like you're just waiting for confirmation like price is already trending in your direction right so you're just waiting you're waiting for the high time frame to give you what you want and then you're waiting for the low time frame to give you what you want so it's like there's nothing there's no like. There's no like feeling of like, oh, am I doing the right thing? Is this the right trade? Like, should I be in this trade? Because like everything is everything is designed to give you conviction and to give you confirmation that like, you know, you're getting the highest probability return in terms of like, will this or won't this be a successful trade, right? Yeah, and I think uh, especially not being susceptible to FOMO in these conditions is probably the best thing 
any of us can do. Yeah. Because just, I always say zoom out on the H4 and look at this PA. If you lose a substantial amount of your stack in this PA compared to in like the bull market, you're going to be kicking yourself in the ass. Cause this is like, this is a couple, this is like maybe a two or 3% range, right? Why do you want to lose money getting chopped up or trying to be stubborn in like a, a small ass range whenever you could just save your cash for something that you put your money in, you two X overnight. So it's like, just, just don't have FOMO in these conditions. Don't try and like be stubborn. And, uh, you know, if, if the move starts breaking towards, uh, you know, away from what side you're on, just kind of cut your loss and like relax. There, there's no rush here. You're not missing any major gains. There's nothing doing five, 10 X. This is just all like low liquidity, low volume, usually like smaller moves that you'll have plenty of time to get into. Absolutely. So we're at like an hour and a half, not counting the technical difficulty section. I don't know how much time you guys have left. Just let me know. Um, I mean, that's kind of like we covered Bitcoin and ETH, and that's kind of like, uh, you know, all the commodities and shit. So all, really all I wanted to cover, uh, Fallus, did you want to share any other charts? Do you have anything else to cover? No, that's uh, that's pretty good to me. Um, one thing I wanted to, to talk about, it's just something you guys did earlier. Um, so the, the VIX chart that you pulled up, I don't know, do you still have that? Um, yep. So like I don't I don't I literally never look at this, but I've just seen I've seen um I don't know do you guys know uh, Nato Nato Goyard on Twitter? He's like uh pretty much like a I guess he uses quant methods. Uh, he's like he's a young guy. He's only eighteen, I think, just a real real smart guy. But he always he always rags on guys for drawing trend lines on the VIX. Yeah. And I like I I don't really know like I again I, I don't look at this chart. So when I saw that, I just messaged him. I said, "Hey, why don't you draw trend lines on the on the VIX again?" So he said, "He said the VIX is calculated by taking the spread between SPX options, blah blah. blah. Since it's a derivative of the of the underlying, it makes no sense to draw lines on the VIX, but rather to do it on the SPX because it's a derivative." So yeah, yeah I don't know. We had um we had Ronnie. Uh, it was a trader I was talking about. We had him on uh, on here like two weeks ago or so, and he was like saying that he doesn't draw trend lines in the VIX either. He draws just level to level. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like, you know, the way I see it is like I don't, I don't really discriminate. If I see like a trend line, I'm gonna draw the trend line just because like that's that's how like I've I actually don't even really use a lot of horizontal levels except they're very high time frame levels. I use mostly horizontal. Lo I mean, uh, trend lines. But if it's like a trend line, I'm gonna draw a trend line, and like if uh. The way I see it is, if a level's respected, uh, or a trend line's respected five or six times, it's probably some type of trend. Like, I don't think it's by coincidence that it just continuously hits that level. So, this is my, you know, you're, he's, he's probably right. Like, it, it's, uh, you know, the spread or, you know, whatever it is. But, and it's my thoughts. If I, like, I don't even know, like, what half this shit is that I chart. I just chart it. So, like, my, yeah, my it, it works out for you doesn't it yeah like, if i'm like drawing shit and it's working like i'm just gonna keep drawing the same shit because like i said i'm an absolute like single digit iq guy so i like take the simplest approach to stuff and like usually like the simplest approach to a lot of this stuff is, like kind of profitable or you know correct so until like a system's not broke, I'm not going to try and like fix it. Well, it's like it's the standard trader's journey in a lot of cases, right? Isn't it where you start you start with like an exceedingly simple system because that's all you know, and then like gradually you increase the complexity of that system until like it almost reaches like a peak complexity when you're like an intermediate level trader, um, and like you there's a lot of like false assumptions being made about like why you're seeing like little pieces of success for the first time and a lot of like incorrect interpretation of data until like eventually like piece by piece all of that complexity gets stripped away until finally you're left with like what is essentially like a remarkably pared down and simple system once again 
but you've arrived at it from like the other side of the trading journey as it were so like your system might be comparatively like the same level of complexity as as it was when you began with but like it's infinitely more i guess like fine-tuned and profitable you know because yeah. you've stripped away all of that nonsense that you thought was necessary to build on top of it while you were getting better you know that's funny that you mention it because i can remember like maybe six or seven months ago i tried using exo charts with all of like the tpo shit and I ended up just, I was like not profitable for like an entire month. Like I just lost money and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? And then I like kind of took a step back and I'm like, well, the only difference is, is that I've started using like TPO as like ways to enter and exit. So I just like removed that and like, I just right back to like the performance that I had before. So it was literally just the addition of exo charts and like TPO that made me like not a profitable trader because i was putting so much merit into like a more complex system that i thought would have made me more profitable really it made me not profitable yeah i mean it was just noise for you whereas for other people i guess it wouldn't be so much noise but i don't know tpo charts i guess they take a little time to get the hang of have you ever used them Tholus? No, I'm actually like, I'm like talking to guys at the moment about like seriously considering adding it to my, to my repertoire. But again, like it, it is that point that I just made, like I, I didn't, um, like that's not just an, an opinion that someone could hold. Like I genuinely do believe that like simplicity will add to your bottom line over time. And that's actually why like, like at the moment I'm trying to like reduce my watch list, you know, like reduce the amount of pairs, the amount of. Uh, acid classes i trade well sorry i only i only trade crypto so that's not an issue but like even in terms of like crypto pairs like i'm trying to get that down to like definitely like under 10 and possibly even just like eventually five different pairs and just like get very good at reading the price action on those pairs rather than like diversifying my attention span over like 20 different uh coins right and it's like it's the same thing with like your trading style like when i first started i was like I was pulling the GAN fans. I had the fib levels. Oh, yeah. I had the harmonics. I had the, you know, I had the, what, what are they called? The, um, uh, Bones the Elliott wave. Like yeah. Yeah. You know, I had everything. Like I had the VU apps, you know, you know what I mean? But like now, like I basically just trade with like, it's just like structure liquidity imbalance, right? That's it. It's just like three different elements on my chart. And I will say that recently, and by recently, I mean like kind of three or four months ago, I started adding in like, uh, auction market theory stuff so like volume profile market profile that kind of stuff a and actually like i will say that like it, it had a very not like a profound effect or anything like that but it, it did it has added like a small element of confluence like i would say that it's maybe like an additional like 10 or 15 percent confluence onto like existing ideas that i might have within my system and that's nice but actually like the crossover there is quite obvious like you have things like uh, poor highs in auction market theory, like in, in market profile, which are just like equal highs. It's just like where liquidity is. And you talk about those poor highs getting repaired. Like that's just the liquidity at that level getting taken. Or you might talk about like a single print in a in a volume profile or in a market profile. But that's just uh, just like an area of low uh, low volume, right? Where where price is likely to, to look to fill. And that's it's the same idea as like a, a rebalancing inefficient price action in um, in like pure PA uh, way of looking at the market. So like those two things go hand in hand to my mind. And like that's that was more like adding like, you know, like adding like a, you know, another paragraph in the existing essay of my TA rather than like starting an entire new thesis or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting topic. Like, I, I don't know what the right or wrong answer is. I know like there are guys, there are PA guys, like pure PA guys who have started looking at like footprint and they swear by it now. So like that alone is enough to, um, to like, to tickle my interest. If you know what I mean? Like, uh, I definitely would like to, I would like to like check it out and maybe have an unprofitable month, like Miz said, <laughs> and then decide, maybe yeah. then decide whether or not I want to go through it or continue with it. I will say yeah, that yeah. Um, one of my favorite uses of footprint charts is um, usually it's on Twitter. Somebody posts that, you know, somebody on Bybit longed, you know, 10 million at like the range high and is just now like the Pico wick of the range. <laughs> and they're just, it's all over the footprint chart how obvious it is.
you love to see it. Yeah, well, all I have to say is uh, those those poor highs need to get a job. <laughs> it's always Bybit, though. Yeah, um, it's, but yeah, yeah the Bybit apes. Oh, yeah. Like getting caught offside. Yeah, it's like name a name a more perfect match. Like Bybit apes longing the breakout and getting caught in a massive wick. Um, you know. Love it. Good deal. All right. Well, do we want to look at any other charts? I'll take a couple requests from from chat, maybe. Um, All right, we got a let's see a chat request for the next five minutes, and then I'm going to uh, go get some food. Yeah, that sounds good. I think uh, there, there did you did you send me an yet? ETC chart? I think I might have missed it. Oh I yeah, I did actually. Look, that's a good that's a good idea. I, I actually really like ETC. Um, yeah, probably one of my. For my money, it's one of the better looking charts in crypto at the moment. If we do get some I'm kind of focus move, That's you're longing ETC? Oh, I already am. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah so just look at this. Like, yeah, this is the H12. So like, again, it, it's actually very similar to the ETH BTC chart that I was talking about earlier. Like, We have a strong trending move to the upside. That comes to an end. We have a swing high, swing low. There are your range extremities. We took liquidity to the range high, moved back down, took liquidity to the range low. And like, if you look at that range low price action, we printed equal lows. Then those equal lows got swept. Like we mitigated that weekly FVG, like pretty much to the 50% mark, which like to my reading of things is uh, like a full mitigation. Um, and now we're just kind of chilling around the range low. So like the fact that we, the fact that we haven't lost the range low, the fact that we're just consolidating here after satisfying a liquidity objective to the sell side, I, I think it looks really good. And like just looking at what's above, right? We have kind of relatively equal highs. We have an H12 imbalance, um, and then there's just there isn't much until you know kind of like range high. Um, and like ETC has this like it has this tendency to just kind of pump out of nowhere yeah. um when like 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 it's 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 pretty much like when eth when eth is is pumping like etc pumps are you know maybe not far behind so like yeah definitely like i think this is one to watch like for me like i would i would like to see btc sweep its current lows first um but like any kind of buyback or any kind of market strength after that and like i, I like this for like a possible like big or move towards those range highs like like up towards the the mid 40s like 44 45 like um i just think it's it's one of those plays where like you know there's a 20 percent chance that it happens but if it does happen like it'll it'll make like it'll it'll you know make your monthly target in one trade you know that kind of way yeah yep um like yeah, the invalidation so, is so clear sorry yeah go on miss yeah i was gonna say i if you go to uh it's uh it's the chart uh if I'll just put in. Yeah. I literally got uh that little red the the newest red line there from that low of that uh Darth Mall. Um that's literally where I got long. So like I was underwater for a little bit, but on that sweep of that low is where I had my orders. So like thirty one not eight five is where I'm long from. It's a really small size, like I said, I don't really trade like massive amounts of money for altcoins i put my money on eth and btc but i I got long here just because like you said it's uh i have a feeling this is kind of getting exhausted to the downside you know we had like kind of a a, a twap sell-off then we had a leg down we rounded the bottom we had another like softer sell-off um this is very controlled selling too like I think there's a lot, a lot of difference between like down only, and then controlled selling. Like yeah, the controlled selling completely wipes out the the singular candle to the upside, but this very much feels like it wants higher. So yeah, like I the, the not... fact that it's just chilling here at range low, like, I think that's super bullish. You yeah. know, it's it's pretty it, to me. It just looks like it's consolidating and getting ready for the next move up. Yeah, so I think uh, I think a triple high, like a triple high, wouldn't even be, surprise me um yeah agreed with that i could see like even a squeeze to maybe like 50 bucks it's like very much a psychological level too and if you go to the higher time frame chart um i don't know if there's if there's like a major level there a major order block but i wouldn't even be surprised if around 50 there's a yeah see like 50 would be right right there to those 
previous wicks so you'd be able to take some look uh you know probably reject off those probably like some type of h12 high up there too we don't want to take the uh, we don't want to take this high <laughs> unbelievable um i think there is it's going to be really interesting to see how etc uh reacts to the merge because um people are talking about how there is going to potentially be like another eth like proof of work potentially like an eth airdrop um you know obviously the, the all the miners that you know invest a ton of money in mining ethereum classic don't want to see it go to zero um so it, i think there is definitely going to be an impact on etc from the merge um i don't know if does anybody look at like the etc eth chart i have not looked at it but probably something good to pull, pull up yeah, I don't even know if it would be on like Binance. I, you can just yeah, just type it in. It probably comes up. What if uh, without the without the slash? What what comes up? Yeah, let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, Kraken. Let's do Binance. Interesting. Yeah, so it looks like it's like bull flagging here. Looks like it's about to fucking rip. Yeah, that is definitely a. Uh... High time frame bull flag in my mind. This looks so good. It looks like it's rounding out on the bottom too. Oof. Yeah, that's pretty bullish. So and if you look, it was it was kind of like like once the range was established, once we had those equal lows, like it, it's it's actually kind of like mirroring the price action on the on just the the ETH. Or it's like the ETC USD pair, where like, yeah, we got a sweep of those equal lows, and now it's just kind of chilling, like getting ready for a move up. In, in my mind, yeah, I, I, it's funny. I never actually looked at that ETC ETH chart, but it's super interesting. And yeah, I think it looks good for a move up. Yeah, good deal. Are you planning to do any uh, streaming around the merge? Uh no, but that would be a good that would be a good call. Um, but yeah, no, can, no, uh... no. Uh, we can like Sorry, collaborate. We can like collaborate a stream or something around the time. Do something. Hundred percent. Yeah. That'd be fun. W would you believe that I'm wearing my Teal Street hat right now? Like almost like uh, getting <laughs> getting in the frame of mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. Miz <laughs> is actually wearing his uh, Teal Street thong right now. <laughs> I yeah, believe the banana it. hammock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's um. um that sounds like a premium subscription service you know? yeah i didn't send you one of those <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah exactly if you guys uh if you guys want any pictures let me know DM <laughs> me. all right well uh unless there's any last minute request okay somebody has kept asking for adam let's just do adam and that'll be it yeah it looks good it looks really good i saw someone um, asking for matic there i'll post a quick chart for matic as well sorry go on with adam I was gonna say maybe like uh, sixteen, seventeen bucks. Overall, like very high beta asset. I wouldn't short it. Um, just a wait for bearish market structure to form. If we form a high here and don't take the previous monthly high, then technically that's a a lower high. And then you would wait for some type of break of ten bucks, and then you could short a retest. Probably around eleven bucks. So yeah, just wait for bearish market structure to form. Don't fade this. Like like we got done saying a little bit ago. Um, if you're interested in doing anything with the coin, probably get long. Don't try and catch the top. What um, uh, what kind of entry would you look for on Adam? Uh, maybe go to like the the hourly. Um, daily open retest. Yeah, I think 12, 12, not four needs to hold. So I think maybe like a, a, a rounded bottom of the daily open would be good. Or alternatively, we crack 13 and come back down and retest the highs. So like, you know, we, we break through to the upside to like 13 point. 13.3 reject back down onto 13 and then you'd probably get long on that that bounce off of 13 definitely all right
Oh, somebody asked for AVAX. I'll pull up AVAX. I haven't even looked at AVAX in so long. Let's see. Um, I don't know. That kind of looks not good to me. Just no. It kind of looks quickly. like a, yeah. It looks like one candle down goes right to like seventeen fifty. Like this looks like it's about to leg down hard. This is this is why I don't trade AVAX. <laughs> You mean you don't like you don't like the coin that we always lose money on? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I mean, it's almost like it's frustrating, right? Like if there's one coin that you like consistently underperform on, like what you should probably do is just never trade it. But on the other hand, it's like, okay, why am I so bad at trading this, and what can I do to fix it? Yeah, I, I know, not trade it. <laughs> yeah. It's an absolute piece of shit. Polis, uh, are you a fan of AVAX? Uh, yeah, it's definitely been in my watch list um, in the past, but I don't believe it is at the moment. Uh, I think the last time I had like uh, a successful long and then a break even short on AVAX, I did. I, I tried to do like the double dog, you know, where you where you long the move up to the to the liquidity level and then you short that sweep you know when you try and catch the move back down oh, God, um, <laughs> yeah 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 and actually at one point the short was like up one or and eventually it went all the way back and pumped through my but like i, I got out of break even but uh yeah that was like that was at least six weeks ago um and i don't think i've taken a trade on it since yeah well uh, here's a tip don't this coin sucks <laughs> <laughs> i think I've lost so much money trying to trade AVAX. I literally removed it from my watch list. <laughs> I don't blame I hate you. This coin. Oh, here I, I got your. Uh, I think I got your Matic chart here, Folis. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Sorry, I'm just gonna post one more chart. Yeah. That's the uh, that's the AVAX double dog that I just posted in there. If you want to just quickly. Um, oh yeah, I'll pull it up. Quickly one pull second. that one up. Yeah. Yeah, Avax double dog. Matic. So Matic yeah, the double, the failed double dog. dog. Yeah, the double dog attempt. But um, that was a really clean. Like the long was really clean because it was just basically like it was a an impulse move up that broke structure, right? And then you're just longing the the low momentum retrace back into that order block, like and confluent with um. I don't know. Do you guys use optimal trade entry uh fib levels? It's the fib level I've kind of pulled on on the the left of that move up um so you're just trying to long you're just trying to f look for no on the on the left so like w like over towards the middle yeah. of the chart yeah there you go exactly i mean it's the same idea yeah it's the same idea but um yeah you're just trying to trying to find entries um in that fib retrace level but yeah it was a clean long and then yeah i tried to tried to catch the short to uh, to less success um, but that, that's genuinely the last time I traded AVAX, and that was back in um, that was the first of July. So that's like uh, two months ago. Yeah, keep it like that. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have a command in our Twitch chat uh, where if you do like exclamation <laughs> point AVAX, the word AVAX. <laughs> first coin. All right, uh, and I guess maybe our just our last chart uh, of the episode is yes yeah, so this is just low, low time frame well like hourly on on matic um so someone asked for matic in the chat and this is kind of what i would look for so like for me the the high time frame liquidity uh, objective at this level has been satisfied which is like a h4 raid so we've just basically swept uh, a h4 swing high um and we partially mitigated uh, h4 imbalance now definitely would have been better if we filled more of that fair value gap as it is we only did probably like 10 percent, but that's fine that's valid as long as the the more important part of that process for me is that we took liquidity above that uh above that um uh above that swing high uh, and then we rejected so there was actually like an hourly break of structure uh we had a, a low momentum retrace like over the last day or so or last two days more like um, and now we have another sweep and uh, um, break of structure. So I just kind of, I did a very quick diagram of, of like what you want to see on like 
the M5 or the M15 in order to short this. Um, and yeah, you, there definitely there are some there's some uh, I actually might try and look for a position on this myself. Uh, just targeting like pretty much those lows um, and there are lows below that as well. But that's how I would play it uh, if you if I was taking a position. I don't think I would be looking for longs here. Um, I think I would be looking for shorts just to take out those very obvious equal lows um, and the, the sell side liquidity below that. Yeah, in low time frame, it really did just kind of look like distribution too. Like someone yeah. just keeps selling off those highs. And it's not like aggressive selling. It's just enough so they can get priced back up there to sell again. So you see there, that's the the H four swing point that I that I spoke about, and there's yeah. an imbalance above that that we we didn't really do too much on. But again, I think uh, because the the high was taken, that's the more important. Yeah, that's the more important wick, right? Yeah, I mean, you could even like if you want to have wider stops, you could even get short here and just put stop at the top of that wick, and then aim for like the uh, the PWH. Yeah, hundred percent. R that would be probably probably less than two R, maybe two R, but yeah, I think that's a probably a solid play. Good deal. Oh yeah, of um, course, all all dependent on BTC, right? <laughs> not yeah, not right. pumping from here, which is as we discussed earlier, a valid concern of mine, a valid hope of yours, Miz. Well, I, I if I'm uh, if I'm being honest, I just actually took half profits on all of my positions just because a low time frame i just looked at btc and i don't like it it's kind of uh yeah it's kind of rounding out now a little bit yeah yeah i didn't so what i was saying is like into daily close i would want price to be above twenty thousand four hundred for a move up uh i mean uh twenty thousand one hundred i would want it above there for for kind of a, a better move up continuation like this, yeah this low grind, like the more time we spend down here, the more bearish I get. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Ms. your your friend has a question. I'm not looking at chat right now. Oh, you're Whoops. not? Okay. Um, well, he hasn't, he, he hasn't asked it yet. He just keeps saying, I have a question. Okay. Well, all right. I'm looking now. So, so you can, what's your question? Don't sound too excited. <laughs> uh, this is, this I think is, this, this is a real life friend. Oh, it's Grayson. Yeah. Okay, Bob. I'll talk to you later, man. All right. We can we can wrap the stream. Fucking guy. Uh, well, I guess right, yeah, yeah. That, that kind of wraps it up. Uh, thank you so much, Folis, for joining us. I don't know. I think I've been following you on Twitter since you had like less than a thousand followers. So. Um, Always been a big fan. Yeah, of well, stuff. Uh, thanks a million. Yeah, that would have been uh, back in February. I think uh, I actually I actually found my one k celebration, one k follower celebration post, uh, and that was back in February, like mid February. So yeah, done a bit, done a bit since then. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So yeah, chat. If you're not already following Fullis, definitely give him a follow on Twitter, on Twitch, and uh, anywhere else you can find him. Yeah, I appreciate that, and uh, thanks, guys, for uh, for bringing me on. This was um, a blast, and hopefully not the uh, hopefully not the last one I do. Hopefully, I haven't um, embarrassed myself too badly, <laughs> and uh, I, I get a I get an invite back to do something. But uh, yeah, no, this was a ton of fun, um, and always nice, uh, always nice to look through some charts um, with you guys. So yeah, hopefully we do it again. Absolutely, yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, and um, cool. you have a you have a Teal Street ref link, don't you? I have a Teal Street ref link. Yeah, I absolutely do. Um, okay. Yeah, let's get that posted. Uh, that posted in here one time. I have like, it somewhere. I'm of no help today, FYI. <laughs> I'm scrolling back through the <laughs> through our messages. I don't find it. I think it's uh, a command in your channel, your Twitch channel as well, right? Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So they can find it. Okay. That there we as go. Well. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, you got I it. Have it here. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Let me just put in the. Uh... There, there you go. go. Nice. Shout yeah. out Teal Street. That's it's missing. I genuinely do all my. Oh, that's missing something. It does. Yeah, it's supposed to have your name. <laughs> oh wait, here we go. Yeah, you know what? I put it into um. Well, there you go. Okay, there we go. Nice, nice. Um, yeah. Shout out Teal Street. I'm 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 a recent convert, relatively recent convert, like last couple of months or so, but uh. Doing all my trading there at the moment and definitely enjoying it so far. Good deal. Well, we got lots of new things in the works. So, uh, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, looking looking forward better to it. Better. All right. Well, thanks again to chat, Ms. Follis. Uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Yeah, catch you around. Thanks. Cheers. Take it easy, guys. Yeah. See ya.